everybody, this is JD Gaming back today with an in-depth introduction to a theme that I've never shown on my channel, World Chalice. So if you liked going fast in the 5Ds era, or you like the Link mechanic right now in the current Link Vrains era, you've come to the right place. World Chalice is a very fun, flavorful archetype of cards that has a cool backstory, artwork, lore, that type of stuff, as well as just all of the crazy link spamming hyperlink strategy that you would ever want in a nice budget package other than some extra deck staples you might have to pick up that you're probably using in other decks anyway things like boral sword dragon and things like that this deck's core is honestly really cheap was recently reprinted in the mega packs and everything and honestly it's just so much fun very reminiscent of the synchro era a lot of these decks can be built in different ways from this core that i'm going to share with you guys there's so many different engines you can incorporate because if you're able to extend your plays further with even random cards or seemingly random cards you'll get some pretty interesting results and of course even with the same exact deck you're able to pilot it in a different way based on your personal style and that's what I really like about this strategy there's a lot of fun that comes from just experiencing how do you see this deck how do you play this game and discovering combos along the way which I feel is like something you don't always get in card games all the time but this is going to be an introduction to the deck's core cards. If you want to see an example deck profile, check out the I card in the type right hand corner where I'll simultaneously be releasing a let's build deck profile. It's exactly what it sounds like. I go through my current build step by step of the current state of my deck really for World Chalice based on my understanding, the current format, you know, more in context. And uh, this will just be a quick introduction for those of you who may want to check this deck out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce the heroes of World Chalice. As with building any deck, our first step is going to be to establish the theme and to build a core that's able to support our deck's goals. And here, although we're not building an entire deck, it does help to kind of know the storyline. We start off with Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, basically Navi from Ocarina of Time, who says, Hey, when I'm normal or special summoned, I'm able to recruit someone to help make the world a better place. So she's able to add a World Chalice monster from deck to hand, whether or not it has an effect. On top of that, if she happens to be in the graveyard, she's able to send someone else from the field or graveyard, or field or hand rather, to the graveyard in order to add herself back to your hand. And although you can only use each of those abilities once per turn, it basically means that if you're able to tutor her out of your deck in some way, you're going to be able to access that search ability. And that's really important because we have to meet now our three main heroes. So here are three vanilla monsters. What is this? This is 2019 Yu-Gi-Oh! JD Gaming. Why are you playing vanilla monsters? Well, each of these guys has their own unique aspects that make them better or worse than the others, depending on the format. And I'll go through each one very briefly. So this is just descending order of level 4, 3, and 2. Beckend, based on its level you can guess, is the strongest. It's got 1800 attack, 0 defense, and it's an earth warrior monster. Those traits are really important because the level 4 earth status means you can tune it with like a glow up bulb or a level 1 tuner. Besides that, in order to go for Naturia Beast, or you could turn it with some level 4 tuner like Spore in order to go for a Boralode Savage Dragon. So lots of synchro plays are enabled by Beckend, and you can get some pretty interesting Xyz monsters like Abyss Dweller to get some extra stranglehold on the game as well. Chosen by the World Chalice has kind of some interesting, you know, it's fairly cliche I suppose, but it's got the flavor text of a journey brewing. And the main reason he's awesome is because he's a fire psychic monster, two very unique sets there between the type and attribute, and it means good old emergency teleport is able to bring out Chosen. So depending on the format, you may be able to play some number of emergency teleport, one right now of course, you could even further expand the core if you wanted by playing something like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, who's not only a hand trap, but also kind of a field trap, if you will, uh, among other things. So Chosen is kind of interesting because it is directly summonable off of Emergency Teleport and can meld with some of the other psychic support there. And although currently the least useful, Crowned has some potential going forward. She has zero attack, instead having 2100 defense and is a water spellcaster. 
And basically, down the line, we're going to have a level 5 Synchro Monster for the theme that allows you to use these guys as Tuner Monsters for its summon, and, you know, unless you're using tokens, which this deck really doesn't do, having one of these guys is pretty useful because you'll be able to treat them as a Tuner Monster for the level 5 summon. Since this deck plays plenty of level 2 monsters, Chosen's pretty good, plays plenty of level 3 monsters, so Crowned is good as well. So, depending on specific characteristics, you may want to use one or the other, or you could go with some combination of them. But these are our acting cast, and it's really weird, right? We're starting off with a vanilla monster, so where do we go from here? Well, we can turn that monster into our Link 1, Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon. Now, this is a Wind Dragon that's an upgrade of one of the monsters we'll talk about down the line. He needs one normal monster that's not a token, and he's got 800 attack. His ability is twofold actually. So the first ability is that during your main phase, you can get an additional World Chalice Monster normal summon in addition to your regular normal summoner set. It does have that same text as Seraph Knight and Aromage Jasmine that says you can only gain that effect once per turn, so it does overlap with them. You can't gain beyond that easy way to know whether or not you can gain additional summons beyond that is if you read a card like Double Summon or Chain Summoning, they'll actually say on there that you're fixing the number of summons in that turn to two or three respectively. This simply adds plus one and therefore it does overlap with every kind of you can only gain these effects once per turn, summoning clauses unfortunately, which does come up with Gem Knight Seraph Knight if you happen to play the Brilliant Fusion Engine. But the whole point of this is you can now go ahead and combo off with another summon, even tributing this guy off as we'll mention. It does also have a Cataster ability and that if he's pointing to an opponent's monster and battles it, he can just kill it automatically. And then he has a shared ability with all the other Link monsters that says if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can extend your plays by special summoning a World Chalice monster from your hand. So Imduk is great because now you can go turn that normal monster into Imduk, then tribute the Imduk for your World Legacy World Chalice. Confusing name, I know, but basically the World Chalice is kind of these heroes. The World Legacy is the theme of seven relics or artifacts in this world, kind of wonders of this world, if you will, with World Chalice being the Holy Grail of sorts. It has three abilities. It's a level five dark machine with no attack and defense, so you'd think it's terrible, but I find myself maxing out on this quite a lot because it has some amazing effects. Its first ability is if this monster is just on the field and a monster is special summoned from the extra deck, you send this card to the graveyard to send that other monster to the graveyard. And although you don't negate its summon, so it can be revived, and you don't negate trigger abilities like Nightmare Unicorn, it is still cool that it doesn't target so you could get rid of your opponent's Borolo Dragon or some other threat without too much of an issue. On top of that, it has two bulleted effects that can each only be used once per turn. Its first one is if you tribute summoned it or set it, like we just described here with this normal summon Imduk tribute summon combo, you're able to go ahead and summon two World Chalice monsters of your choice from your deck besides another copy of this card when this thing leaves the field, which is great because now you can turn this one monster into two after you make a link play with it or send it to the graveyard with Lee's recovery effect, something along those lines, and it'll help you continue your plays, keep them going. Since Imduk is able to drop a monster to your field next to this guy as you tribute summon it, it's very easy then to continue linking off and make your plays go further. Its other ability is during your main phase, except Except the turn it was just sent there, you can go ahead and banish it from the graveyard in order to add a World Chalice card, or rather World Legacy card from your deck to your hand. So not the heroes, but you can add this themed Monster Reborn in World Legacy Succession, which basically says as long as you have a main monster zone that some Link monster points to your own or your opponent's Saryuja or something. You're able to go ahead and reborn any monster in your graveyard. You can use it for any summons you want, attack with it, use its abilities, etc. So it becomes a nice one of in the strategy, if nothing else, because you're able to extend your plays further off of the already potent World Legacy World Chalice. And then the last main deck monster is World Chalice Guard Dragon. This is a level 1 Wind Dragon with 400 attack and defense with two abilities. The first is that it acts as a hand trap. If your opponent would try and target one of your linked 
monsters, or rather your linked monster, uh, you're able to go ahead and negate the targeting ability. That linked monster is protected from your opponents, you know, Nightmare Unicorn, things of that nature. So pretty good. Uh, if you have no other reason to bring this thing to the field, it is a world chalice monster. So you could use this as kind of an extender. And once this thing is used up and sent to the graveyard for any reason, even the same turn as the one it was sent there, which is much better than World Legacy World Chalice, this card lets you go ahead and banish it from the graveyard to special summon one of your vanillas to the field to a zone a link monster points to in defense position. And that effect is a hard once per turn, so I usually find myself running one, maybe two of this, depending on the build. But essentially, this card is awesome in that it protects your stuff, yes, but I just like the fact that it's a reliable, searchable way to extend your plays even further by bringing back one of your key hero cards. And then from here, the main core consists of three more link monsters that are basically upgrades of all these other guys. We saw World Chalice Guard Dragon got a evolved into Imduk. Well, we have these three as well. Chosen becomes Aurum, the World Chalice Blademaster, who is a Link 2 with diagonal arrows, and you would think, oh man, that's awesome. In this deck, ironically, it's not the best. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's probably the worst set of Link arrows you have in your commonly used monsters, simply because if you summon Saruja up in your extra monster zone, then this card's effect is kind of dead. So, kind of have to be clever with how you play this thing. It ends up becoming part of a combo because it needs two World Chalice monsters to summon. But again, when you're able to use Guard Dragon to bring out a monster back, or you're able to use any of your guys like Imduk to bring another monster to the field, or heck, your World Legacy World Chalice brings two World Chalice monsters straight to the field, this guy becomes a snap to summon. You just gotta make sure he goes up in that extra monster zone, because he has two abilities. The first is for each World Legacy monster in your grave with a different name, it gains 300 attack. All right, starts off with an OK 2000, goes up to 2300, likely won't get any larger unless you're playing some pretty terrible artifacts in this deck because World Legacy World Chalice, that big cup, is the only thing in this deck that will give it an attack boost, unfortunately. But the reason you play the Aurum is for its combo potential with its second ability. It lets you go, and if it's pointing to a World Chalice monster, you could tribute that monster in order to go ahead and revive any monster in your graveyard, much like World Legacy Succession, that monster born spell card. Its abilities are still alive, it can still be used for all the summons and everything, no restrictions on it, which is crazy, because then afterwards you can combine that with Aurum or some other card with Aurum, link it off, and then Aurum has that shared ability again to summon another World Chalice monster from your hand to replace it if it's sent to the graveyard. So this card's nice in that it's able to toolbox some neat things. If you Brilliant Fusion or Foolish Burial, a light monster, there's a key one we'll talk about down the line, you can revive that, so that becomes very relevant. Overall, a very powerful card, brings back entire Link monsters or obscenely powerful effect monsters that'll help you just get more advantage than you should be able to in a deck like this. Ebe, then, is a water spellcaster monster with 1800 attack, and this becomes the generic link monster of this set, because although it needs two monsters with different types and attributes, and that's kind of why all those aspects were pretty unique and important, Ebe is so easy to summon in a deck that has every type and attribute pretty much be mismatched by design. Her abilities essentially protect whatever she's pointing to, because if she is linked to something, meaning if her arrows are involved in anything, or if she is pointed at by anything. Even if she's next to a normal monster and nothing else that counts as linked, she is protected from destruction by battle or card effects, so she's gonna stick around. And then this card can't be targeted by any cards when your opponent, or rather when this thing is linked. And then if you happen to have one of the pointed monsters be threatened for destruction, you can send Eve to the graveyard instead. And then if she does so, or if you use her as a link material, she'll trigger again, replacing herself with another hero from your hand. The thing with Eve's protection effect you gotta remember is if your opponent's playing some kind of disruption effect or destruction effect rather that's mass removing, something like Dark Hole, Raigeki, or Interrupted Kaiju Slumber, Eve is safe because that first ability actually protects her from dying as long as she's pointing at something. She can therefore destroy herself instead or send herself to the graveyard instead 
for her other ability to protect her comrades. So if she were going to die already, you couldn't protect her or protect the companions by sending her instead because she was going to die already. In this case, though, you are able to do that. So just an important thing to know, you are indeed able to use Eve to protect things, whereas you wouldn't be able to with something like Proxy Dragon. And then the last Link monster to talk about here is Ningirsu, World Chalice Warrior. This Earth Warrior with 2,500 attack is a Link 3, and man, is he mighty. He's got the Cardinal Compass Rose type of arrows up, left, and right. And upon... Well, I guess to summon him first, you need two Link monsters that add up to Link 3. So you're likely using something like Imduk or a Link Spider with Eeb or Aurum in order to bring this guy out. But you want to do some Fandangling in order to get as many World Chalice monsters next to him as possible because when he's summoned, each one he's pointing to gives you a free draw. That could be zero and it still activates, or it could be up to three cards. Very easy to get two guys pointing, or this guy pointing to two things rather, for a free pot of greed out of nowhere with this thing. So very powerful for that aspect. And on top of that, once per turn, you can select one card on each side of the field at resolution of this effect. Not target, but just choose whatever you would like and just send them to the graveyard. Again, once this effect resolves. So non targeting non-destruction removal is just absolutely nuts and then he also is able to summon out a replacement from your hand when he goes to the graveyard so a lot of times you'll end up using these guys for their abilities then link them off to extend your play and then you can bring them back easily through some combination of aura monster born world legacy succession something along those lines but these are our primary heroes we now shift gears into one of the best support sets for this theme and although things like the plant and Engine that I'm currently playing in my most recent build are viable cards, uh, at least until they get hit. This engine is so high in synergy with the core that it's worth talking about here. We're talking here about cards from 2003's Ancient Sanctuary. The Agent of Creation Venus and Mystical Shine Ball were extremely odd picks back then because it's like you could pay 500 life points to summon level 2 vanillas, but why would you? You couldn't do anything with those. It's kind of like Scapegoat wasn't amazing back then. It was okay, but not like the craziest thing until some goats... Uh, goat format, you know, basically came about and uh, people started using Metamorphosis with Thousand Eyes Restrict. Well, in this case, Link Summoning is our way of breaking Mystical Shine Ball because one Agent of Creation Venus lets you pay 1500 life points to summon out three Shine Balls and you've turned one summon into four. That lets you go off with so many plays. Basically, I won't go through specific combos as to what you're able to do because, again, I feel there is such a fun aspect to the strategy when you're able to just look and say, whoa, look at all the summons I can do. I want to go this here first and then that'll set up this and so on. There is value, I feel, in playing around with the strategy and just learning the ins and outs on your own. But I will say that this ends up providing an unfair amount of advantage because don't forget, Shine Ball is also a vanilla. That means you can go for Imduk, you can go for other tech cards like Link Spider and so on. That means you can actually go make an Imduk, make a Link Spider, have one of each of these. That's four different names for a card like Saryuja so that you can get its draw effect extra extensions and so on so this card's absolutely nuts it comes full circle when we play three copies or however many but i usually like the max amount of transmodify because although this is a hard once per turn you're able to go ahead and turn your shine ball or your Lee World Chalice Fairy that you're already probably maxing on to go for your Agent of Creation Venus because you're upgrading a level 2 Light Fairy Monster into Venus who then is able to go ahead and summon the remaining Shine Balls from your deck. So Transmodified basically makes us you have 6 copies of Venus in your deck a bit conditional, yes, but you have so many targets for Transmodify that there's no reason not to be playing some kind of quantity, or at least consider playing some quantity of it. The icing on the cake, as if this weren't good enough, is Exodius, the ultimate Forbidden Lord. So this is a card from GX, so you may not even remember it. It essentially is supposed to be some kind of Exodia gimmick alternate win condition, but the key points here is that it's a dark spellcaster, so type and attribute different from a lot of things is awesome. You're able to go and special summon it for free, and its cost, if you will call it that, is just take everything in your graveyard that's a monster, put it back in your deck and extra deck. That means all your Link monsters can be summoned again, you can use them a second time. Your Mystical Shine Balls all go back to your deck, so if you kept Venus on the field, you could summon three more. And essentially what that means is Exodius 
turns your Venus and three Shine Balls, which is four monsters, into Exodius and three more Shine Balls, doubling it to eight. And that's not a hard once per turn, because Exodius is an old, archaic GX card. So if you drew a second Exodius, you're able to go and summon four more monsters with another Exodius instead of Shine Ball. So you can see how this card becomes absolutely nuts, and that's part of the reason why I can't go through and show specific combos, because there are so many different things you can do with this deck. I feel it gives it really... it's kind of doing it injustice to say, oh, this is what this deck can do, because depending on the context, there's probably something you could do more of. So definitely definitely play around with the theme a bit, see what types of plays you're able to do, but at the very least you can understand one Venus with no Shine Balls in your graveyard means you're able to go and do four summons right there, every Exodius thereafter is four additional summons potentially, which is just absolutely crazy. It does also have a Foolish Burial effect, which could in theory be useful. He has to attack for it, but sending any monster of your choice to the grave is pretty good. Because remember, Agent of Creation Venus is like the best target for your Aurum or your Monster Reborn effects. Um, but alas, Exodius is kind of just there because of that recycling and free summon. I've never used that Foolish Burial effect, but it may come up at some point, so there is that information. And to close out the introduction, I want to go through and talk about some awesome Link monsters and one particular monster from the main deck to kind of give you some extra things, food for thought, because there are a lot of things that you can and should consider for this strategy, at least. We're starting off with Link Spider. I went and talked about this briefly as another name for Saryuja, but this card's also amazing because in that original, yeah, normal summon a World Chalice vanilla, you go into the Imduck, that type of combo, Link Spider fits in perfectly because any additional World Chalice heroes you drew or any Shine Balls you drew can be turned into Link Spider first, you special summon another one below it, and then you could turn that guy into Imduk, and now you at least start with two monsters. Having that downward arrow to start is quite nice, especially if you're able to protect it with a card like Nightmare Phoenix, which would save it from battle anyway. So Nightmares are the next engine to kind of consider. Um, Cerberus can be played as well. I'm not playing it currently, so it's not here. But just to give you an idea, these guys are good for proactive removal if you're going second. They're great at enhancing your board by giving you a semi-skill drain, uh, giving you battle protection with the bird, or just giving you more resources through raw draw power off of the unicorn. So all around, very powerful cards. They're so generic that they are worth running. And of course, thematically, the nightmares were related to the World Chalice Monsters. If you follow the lure, that's where Ib becomes corrupted and all that stuff. So, you know, that that's where it is. And then uh, we got some other Link Monsters like the uh, Trigate Wizard, don't forget, has multiple abilities, much like Saryuja. It, it has that co-link double damage effect, which helps you end games very quickly with things like Boral Sword Dragon. It has the proactive banish effect with two co-links, and it has the ability to negate and banish a card as an omni-negate with its three co-links. And so this card, I think, just shows you, even without necessarily demonstrating specific plays that this deck is a link spam sometimes even an extra linking deck and trigate wizard is just at home here perfectly and then the last link monster to talk about is of course saryuja don't think it needs too much of an introduction but it's a massive beast 2800 attack three massive abilities depending on the number of different monsters you use to summon it if you use two everything it points to that it's summoned into or pointing at rather uh, will gain a 300 attack and defense boost. That is an activated effect that even works on your opponent's field, so don't forget about Ghost Ogre. If that becomes popular in any format, that is something to watch out for because it is exploitable. But in most situations, it just becomes 900 extra attack on your field, which helps you push for game more easily. The three monster ability, of course, lets you special summon a guy from your hand, allowing you to get your Shine Balls, or I guess your Venus, for the Shine Balls into play, your extra monsters like Lee, who will trigger upon special summon, all those things, so great card for that purpose as extending your plays, and then of course, drawing four, putting three away, makes it so that you always have your Shine Balls live, makes it more likely you'll draw into your Venus and your Exodius and all your other key cards, so Saryuja is absolutely nuts. You can play 
a good number of these, honestly. Some people play two, some people even go three. I usually stick with one or two just because you're able to go and add them back into your extra using the Exodius, um, which kind of goes and allows you to cheat the numbers a little bit. You don't have to play quite as many. You can go a little more for diversity and uh, more possibilities in your extra deck thanks to that card. And then the last card, especially in tandem with the Saryuja, is going to be Rescue Ferret. Now, this card follows the same pattern as the rescue monsters, but I feel like it's the the most, it's the nuttiest one of them all. Like, this is coming from a dude who's played around with Obedience School with Rescue Cat, who's played around with Rescue Ferret, or Rescue Rabbit in the uh, Metal Foes decks and all that stuff. Hamster in that same deck, but Ferret, as awesome as all those other guys are, this thing just takes the cake. This thing's cost is to shuffle it from your control into the deck, which means it's basically untouchable once it's resolving. And then it says it lets you special summon monsters from your deck of any kind, your choice, as long as their total levels is six. So that's a one, one, six, a one, two, three, a three and a three, a two and a four. There's so many combinations. And the only restriction, as long as that monster doesn't have something on it that restricts itself from being played, is that their effects are negated while they're on the field, but who cares about that? Rescue Ferret is going to get you all the resources you need to just end the game, potentially. Yes, there are FTK and OTK combos available with this thing. I like this thing more as a flavorful, soul charge type of a card in this strategy, specifically because we have Saryuja, which gives you multiple zones to play into. Uh, realistically, you could go hardcore into this theme by playing three Rescue Ferrets and up to three Emerging Emergency Rescue Rescue as well. This is the deck to play it in uh, with all the free link zones that you're able to create off of just the one monster like Saudi Asia or your overall field. So definitely at least consider this guy because uh, he is just nuts. And there you have it an in-depth introduction to World Chalice. Maybe you found one of your new favorite decks. If you did, let me know down below because I had a ton of fun with the strategy and it would be awesome. It'd make my day if it ended up introducing something really cool to you guys as well. If you want to see specific examples, don't forget to check out the I card in the top right hand corner to check out my deck profile on the theme and maybe even deck profiles in the future as that theme gets updated because as you may have seen from here, there is a lot of potential depending on what you want to play in here alongside here and how you want to play the pieces the sky's the limit with this type of a strategy so lots of evolution coming on this theme i'm excited for it and i hope you guys enjoyed this as always so thanks guys this is jd gaming i'll see you guys either over there or if not that next time that's the end of this video but there's plenty more where it came from I invite you to explore the playlists on screen to see what else I have to offer. And if you really liked what you saw today, consider subscribing to JD Gaming for more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks guys, this is JD Gaming, hope you guys enjoyed as always, and I'll see you guys next time.